Thank you. Great. Yeah, based on time, maybe we just move on. We want to talk about pers personal finance management. And this is something that, this is knowledge that I lacked terribly. And it caused me a lot of harm. And so every time I think about it, I feel hurt. Yeah, I feel like, how come I didn't know about all this? I'm one of those people who believed you only need to read uh, things that not everyone is reading, like science. Yeah, science looked good. And then you see, when I joined the Department of Physics, at one point I was contemplating I should do something in computing. I remember um, uh, Dr. Baki uh, told us, no, 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 there they will do no, not, not much uh, beyond the keyboard. And uh, that, that was uh, interesting. And so I concentrated on physics. Sometimes you feel really good just doing science, or if somebody is an engineer, you feel really good just doing engineering. You do not want to relate with anything, finance, business, whatever. I remember in Chiromo, we would go to the TV room during those days watching news, and when it reached business news, we say that is for Kabete students. We go back to our studies. That's the way life is. I did not know much about finance. So throughout my life, I've made grievous mistakes. Yes, I've done uh, myself a great disservice. As I told you yesterday, my first business, my first problem, uh, money problem that I wanted to solve was uh, in class five. We had moved to a different mm, locality. That is my mother's matrimonial home. And that was third term of class five. And I was always uh, seeing people during breaks. They buy stuff. They buy the jaggery, nguru. Some of you know nguru. They buy uh, sugar cane. Uh, they buy mandazi. I could not buy. Now, besides, I wasn't taking breakfast at home. So I kept wondering, where do these people get money? Yeah, I asked one of my friends and neighbors. Uh, he was called Sylvans. I asked, where, where, where do you get money every time you're buying stuff? Then guess what he told me? That my debtors uh, pay me back. And I was wondering now, where the hell did this guy get the debtors? Where did he get the money, first of all, to loan people? So, as you can see, I started by asking, which didn't do a lot of good. Then, the following year, uh, we were introduced to business education. I just loved it. They started talking about sources of money and things like that. That was class six. You know, that nowadays they don't do that. They wait until you are in uh, form one. And uh, I figured out maybe I can make some money. So I chose to be in business. We were, uh, I chose to run some business together with my mom. We started uh, selling bananas. We go to the market, buy them on Saturdays, ripen them uh, over the week, then go sell them. And then it expanded to some other things like cassavas, cooked ones, we'd uh, sell to the nearby uh, training college. And that solved my problem. For a time, I was able to afford things. I even bought myself a pair of shoes. I bought my mom some clothes. That was class six going on. <coughs> and. Uh, uh, I did not have a lot of money mind, and so by the time we were leaving that place, that is the end of that year, I didn't have any money, and there was no trace of it. The same thing happened when I started another business uh, later in, uh, in, in our home, hometown. Before, I've, I've just told you that in Form 3, I, instead of being in Form 3, I was out. I was out because... I, also, I didn't have school fee, and the other thing is, I also had to find a way to survive. So I thought, maybe let me look for money so I can go pay my school fee. But, again, because of lack of this financial education, a bit, any little bit of it, I only knew how to make money, but I did not know how to handle money. Uh, by the end of that time, I did not have as much, except maybe to buy myself a pair of uh, uniform and books. I did not pay school fee if it were not for another teacher calling me back to go to school 
I wouldn't have gone maybe in that time, but it was in my mind. Remember, my focus was not uh, tainted. Uh, in, in the university, the moment I got into the university, my first problem was how will I survive? Because I was not going to depend on anyone. I did not have, I did not have anybody to give me any pocket money. I've never seen pocket money, by the way, in my life. I did not have anybody to depend on. So, I asked myself, how am I going to survive in college? And uh, the first thing I did was, uh, the, you see, when you are in f uh, first year, these people come into your hostel uh, hooking things. I saw somebody uh, selling the shavers. I thought, perhaps I can cut people's hair when I'm in college and I bought them, they were fake. They didn't even cut my own hair. I had a friend with whom we were staying in the same hostel. <coughs> we picked them, we started practicing because I had never done that. It didn't work for me. I started figuring out what next. And uh, next term, you, your next semester, I bought myself, I, I added some money, bought myself a computer. No, I went first for those packages in town uh, for 4,000 shillings. That is the next, sem the next semester, which was semester two. So I learned a bit of those packages. I'd never touched a computer before. So that was my first time to do it. After that, the following time, uh, the following uh, uh, year, I managed to put together uh, some uh, money from my loan. You know, people were buying big radios th that time. And, uh, uh, and that is what people loved putting into their houses. Up to now, by the way, I've never bought a radio. Uh, uh, somebody might not believe this. And apparently, I don't even know much about how to operate a radio. I also didn't know much about how to operate a TV, even in the hostels. So I didn't want to sit in front so that somebody can tell you to go increase volume. I always wanted to sit behind. Because we didn't not have any, we didn't have any TV, we didn't have a, a, any radio, and all those things. And I didn't see much value in the radio. I wanted a computer more. <coughs> so I bought a computer. Uh, it was cloned, assembled. We just went with another friend of mine who was doing compu com computer science. Uh, we went to Westlands in some windy shop, uh, actually within his home. And uh, it was arranged, assembled for us, and we came with it, excess type of computer. And uh, I started typing for people doing the same things, the very same things that I, that I had learned. Typesetting, typing, whatever, uh, uh, designing things, posters, and I was doing a good job. And that kept me quite uh, busy in college, so I was running a business here to live. I was... Uh, was studying, I was a student leader in various groups, and uh, generally always busy. But time flew very fast. In fact, by the time I was leaving college, while I knew I don't have anybody else to go live with after college, maybe some of you are lucky, you have some other people who can accommodate you. I did not want, because I had lived with people a lot of uh, my early life, I did not want to live with anybody. But I wanted to be in Nairobi, and I wanted to go straight to my house. But because of my lack of financial knowledge, I didn't manage. I did not have money when, when uh, time came to leave college. In fact, I thought I would get another a small room to continue running my business after, after college because of my influence anyway. But interests were high. Many people wanted the same. And now that I wasn't a student and uh, I wasn't a leader anyway, it was not easy. I had to, while I had thought I would not go to, um, to be employed, I had to go look for employment. And that's why I got into IAT. But I told myself within five years, I should be out, and uh, that happened. I did it in under four, under five years, four and a half years. So what am I trying to say? That even you right now, your time is going to fly very fast. 
your 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 four years usually ends like just a few days and uh, university can be very sweet by the way more so university in nairobi i loved it i enjoyed every moment in the university i enjoyed uh, everything including the cuts and the exams i loved even the downtimes and so and i had very good friends uh, and so time run uh, time time flew very fast and i did not have any money while some other people like me who had a, a bit of financial intelligence managed to do great things and they are much more successful i will tell you a few of such stories so this is a critical uh, lesson that you need to learn if uh, i later learned this i think by 2010 that is many more years thereafter uh, after even uh, after uh, leaving college and that was very unfortunate so i learned it put my heart into it and my type is i learn things and teach them i told you i wanted to know what makes others successful and what uh, makes others to become unsuccessful at least as far as uh living a fulfilled life is concerned so <clears throat> first thing is you need to set your money goals set financial goals what do you want to achieve by when without a goal you will not achieve much i remember my uncle told me there are many people who wait to get money and then they do uh, they they ask themselves what do i do with this money that that is a failure type of living always have goals of what you want to do so that when money comes you already know where to take it very critical you might say but you already know maybe for people who are employed you already know how much you earn and where will this money come from remember the same thing we learned what we focus on expands so let's focus on the result we want let's focus on our goals it's the same sense If you don't have a, 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 a goal you probably will not get that money because the universe gives you what you want not what uh, no what what you want not necessarily what you need what is in your mind not necessarily what you qualify for anything so we must start with goals we we may think about the same thing planning uh, if i get this much where does it go we plan our lives by this year i would like to live in my own house by this year <coughs> i'd like to uh, finish maybe my uh, maybe second degree by this year i should be doing this so you plan yourself and then you do what you can do don't think too much about what to do ideas will come because you already set the goals you already have plan with your life if you live a planless planless life you are doomed to live the life you don't want to live at least in the future and you will keep groaning remember i told you that out of 100 people who graduate at age 25 40 years down the line only 5 live somewhat the life they want to live many of them are, are struggling and a lot of them perish due to hard life So you've learned to plan now uh this is something that is unique and many people don't view it like this but this is the way I've come to discover it you need to learn the art of making money learn how to earn money and the only way people make money is when they sell i can i i, I can feel uh, the way some people feel when they hear this word sell because they know selling is equivalent to peddling things walking door to door or standing in the streets selling something <coughs> we must change our thoughts about this word because without selling nobody earns if you're working somewhere you're selling your time and skill for that particular uh, income maybe uh, besides uh, the fulfillment that you may be having that is if you are in the field that you love you always sell something when you're going for an interview you're selling 
you're selling yourself, you're trying to tell them uh, what is it that you are able to do for them. When you're improving in your branding, you're selling. And this is why I said leaders are salespeople. They keep selling. And when, when you want to attract more people to you, you must sell yourself better as somebody who is the reliable, who is dependable, somebody who can solve bigger problems, somebody who, who can be trusted. That is all about sales. What is sales? I like defining it as making people think the way you think. You influence people. Leadership is also defined as influence, positive influence. I love, I love putting the word positive. Positive influence. So if leadership is influence and selling is influence, then selling and leadership are one and the same thing. Only that a leader sells more. I love giving this example. If I stand along some street and uh, maybe let's say we are uh, we are uh, standing at the university way selling the same product with uh, uh, professor magoa he will sell more than me because he's a bigger leader he's a more successful leader than i am yeah he is more known he sold more many people have bought him because people buy you before they buy from you if they don't buy you they will not buy your idea and so we must think in terms of what is it that we sell Others sell desperation, and students are good at this. They sell how they broke, they are how broke they are. They didn't get, uh, they didn't get to uh, get supper. They didn't do what, all sorts of desperation, so that somebody can buy their desperation, yeah, fill for them and give them some pocket money, yeah. Some other people will uh, sell products. I remember in the hostels there are people who are selling eggs. There are people who are selling books. There are people who are selling <coughs> clothes. There are people who are selling skill. They uh, play it, people, for example, and earn some money. So we must think in terms of what value are we bringing to the marketplace? What is it that people can buy from us? And uh, what, uh, why should people buy us? People only make money. It doesn't matter how you will reason it out when they sell something. They sell directly or indirectly. They sell a service or they sell an idea or they sell a product. And the more you sell, the more money you get. In the hostels, I used to sell the computer services. Yeah, not cyber, not photocopying, but printing, typing. I used to make for many people their CVs. The from those who are living, I was uh, designing their CVs, writing for them, I was gifted in writing. That was a service. I used to design posters for people who are vying for various positions. They would wait for me even as late as 11 before I come from main campus. I do their work up to maybe 3 a.m. <coughs> and then they go their way. I start looking for what to eat at that point. I would forget that I had not even taken supper. So. My life was fairly busy. The question is, what do you sell? Yeah. Now, you've sold and you have money. Uh, people have bought you. Uh, sometimes I realized that when I was in Onus, there was sitting allowance. I didn't know about this. This was a new concept to me. All the leadership roles I'd played, and even a lot of them that I play today, don't have sitting allowance. This was quite gracious. In fact, I'm hearing that... <coughs> Uh, even bundles need to be facilitated so that students are online. That's quite interesting. Uh, the question is, how do you spend your money? If you don't spend it wisely, it will always go. You see, you earn money from, you get money from help, uh, for example, yeah. and a couple of uh, weeks down the line, it's, it's all finished. It's spent out because we do not know how to spend. We will spend to impress other people. We will spend not thinking about tomorrow, not thinking about any future. We spend as if we are migrating to another country. Yes, and we are given just that to spend. So we must think in terms of what am I spending on and is it necessary? Is it a necessary expense? And this is why it's important to have some uh, basics. You know, 
in college you are not paying rent hopefully you are living in a hostel if you are paying rent elsewhere well that's part of your expenditure you're not uh, spending on water or electricity which is what most people spend on outside here a friend of mine once told me the, the one i was telling you had to repeat so that he do he, 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 he graduated the following year after me because he was always the pa for one of the students who was very committed in politics he told me you see paul peter you are not in nairobi until you are out of college until you are out of the university when you are in the university of nairobi you are not in nairobi because the university uh, somewhat protects you and then here was another thing i got that in nairobi you are always spending money whether you are earning money or not the question is whose money are you spending either you're spending your parents money your guardians money whatever money be wise if you make a habit of being spent thrift most times you will end up uh, living the life you don't want to live so spend where necessary spend in your uh, the stationery the books spend in uh, uh, upkeep uh, you don't need to eat uh, chips every day uh, chicken and whatever you going to town to eat all those things remember we also talked about what needs to get into your body to keep you healthy if you keep yourself unhealthy you will also spend in um, hostel and things like that you 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 get involved in drugs you will always spend in drugs and guess what will happen they are very good at consuming your money so be wise in your expenses note them down be able to track how much do i spend in a week how much do i spend in a month it will help you it will be very very helpful now here is another thing priorities you've known how much you spend and how much you can spend the question is uh, where do you take the little money that you have left and this is something i love uh, telling people there is a difference between liabilities and assets and probably this is not the same as what you already know uh, how i define assets are those things that bring money liabilities are those things that take money for example if you buy a vehicle immediately you leave college it will most likely take money from you either you're paying through loan or something like that so whenever you're going to spend money start thinking uh is this something that will add me money or it will always take money away from me now talking about this you need to buy more of assets i told you that we have in uh, a number of stories of people who did the same with their money in college the the help money and the little money they were earning an example is larry some of you may have heard larry laser larry kept a good chunk of his uh um, help money and he managed to buy shares from uh, Kenjen later disposed uh, the shares and bought himself a house in Embakasi i think so and only had to top up a little for some time and now he has a house there some other people through the money that they were able to put together just from the little that they were earning they were able to establish other businesses immediately after college yeah some other people after after uh, college they were able to uh, buy themselves uh, the, uh, to rent a house immediately as they were looking for jobs and things like that so as i told you your time in college is going to run very fast please ensure you put some money aside otherwise you will be Uh, part of the people who walk uh, around even your shoes not very neat and you, you you don't even have money to print your papers or you will go home that is the last thing you want to do that you are you have a degree you finished your college and then you're going home maybe to the parents who did not school as much as you be careful how you spend your money and where you spend your money it's very important and uh, this is something i'd love us to take a keen look at that 
when you get your income, this is a typical uh, income schedule or income uh, statement. When you earn your money, uh, that is your income. The question is, what, how many sources of income do you have? I love saying that people should have multiple sources of income. Uh, it's proven to be very helpful because at some point, one business will do much better than another. In the Proverbs, in the Bible, I, I think, no, no, it, no, it's Ecclesiastes, I think chapter 11. It says, invest in seven or eight businesses because you do not know which one will succeed and which one will not. Through experience, I've learned that businesses don't do well all, all the years, all the seasons. I had a business that I started uh, through which I left employment, but three years down the line, it wasn't doing very well, but it was my only source at that point. It gave me a lot of stress, and I had to start a few others. I had actually registered my ICT business earlier, but because I was working full time, I did not have time to pick it up. So I picked it and started working on it. Today, I have three uh, businesses. I have a business that relates with uh, nutrition, uh, nutrition, health and nutrition. Uh, that's why I talk about nutrition as well, uh, and through which I give supplements. I have a business that hosts people and providing online presence. Somebody wants to register a domain to uh, and and uh, get a reliable hosting services getting emails that work you know most people will provide you email uh, the hosting but they don't have the technical know-how and they don't have the capacity to ensure that your services are on so uh, and things to do with developing websites whatever all those things i have them and then I have a training business that provides team building, provides trainings, provides consultations, and things like that. I've learned that they have seasons, like training, uh, during this COVID thing, most people who are only doing training, they're out of business because most uh, trainings had been suspended. Just before we uh, get, got into this curfew thing, this training that we are now having was supposed to happen much earlier. There are enough of them which were suspended and some have been overtaken by events now. There are people who are in business, in the business of uh, events management. Which event are you going to manage when people are not meeting? There are people who are in the business of, uh, there are people who are in the business of uh, DJ or you are an MC and things like that. I know a number of people who are now feeling really bad. So the question is, how many sources of income do you have? It's always wise to have multiple sources. One may dry up, like now in jobs, uh, lots of people who've been working, the other day I read, the people who've been, the, the employees for Serena, they are now going to, uh, they are, they've started their unpaid leave beginning 1st of June. And if anyone will be called or retained for whichever reason, then they will be on 30% of their salary. If uh, somebody would be called on a day-to-day -day just to work on a few things and go, they will be paid per day. And you can imagine what that means if you did not have any fallback plan. So it's good to know that your income uh, column should keep increasing. You have some rentals. There are a few people who, after college, they bought some, some uh, s uh, these kiosks in Kibera and uh, around Olympic. And people were renting them and paying them some little money. At least it's positive cash flow. There is something we call cash flow. It is positive cash flow, not negative cash flow. So have some, um, you may, might have some people paying you money. You want to stop uh, your, uh, some of unnecessary expenses, like if you can get a house and stop paying rent and things like that. If you are running your business, you know how to file tax returns, so you are not just, uh, just uh, bombarded with unnecessary claims. 
and things like that. So increase your income, the, the streams of income, and your income needs to be put in investments. Investment. Whatever comes from your income, a portion of it always needs to come to, in, uh, to assets so that your asset column grows. Because the asset column needs to grow longer than the liability column. You see? So this is the time, this is now what I was telling you, that some people bought stocks when they were in college. Others were selling vehicles. I couldn't understand how a student can run business of selling vehicles. And remember, we still talked about yesterday being majoring in the major and minoring in the minor. So as you plan yourself, you know what can I... You see things like stock, if you are experienced in them and you can always seek consultation, you can always get uh, some good, uh, good uh, stocks to buy. And by the time you're leaving college, the value might have gone high. Maybe you'll just keep adding or you want to turn them over so that you, you buy something else. Because if you don't have money, most times you are not able to lead, by the way. Because you need to dress neatly. You cannot, you cannot be walk, uh, walking shabbily and you still think you are going to be a positive influence. So some people manage to buy stock. Some people manage to set up their own businesses. A business is an asset when it starts giving positive cash flow. And more so when you don't have to be there. Real estate. Somebody buying a house. I just gave you an example of Larry. And a few others, somebody buying kiosks or some small houses in Kibra and turning them over and uh, uh, selling some of them later and buying some other few things. And things like that. So we must keep ensuring that our asset column is growing. Our asset column is growing, but we limit liabilities, unnecessary liabilities. Now, some people, using their same loan money, they were able to even pay for school fees for some of their siblings. I paid for two of my siblings personally. And uh, uh, the, the problem is I did not know much about investment. So, going back here, in spending, it is always said you, you spend what is left. You save first, then you spend what is left. Ideally, this should not be less than 10%, whatever you are leaving. But depending on which formula you have, you can discuss this better with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, somebody who is more experienced. I can help, for example. Uh, you can always set aside 10% for investment. You can always set aside 10% for just saving. But then you, uh, ideal scenario is you should not spend more than 70%. Because you also need to give back 10% to charity or to the church or to God or whatever you will call it. You need to give at least 10%. It doesn't matter how much you're earning. There is a way it programs you. Money, money is all about discipline. How disciplined we are. So, the part that you will leave here, that, 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 at least that 10%, you keep it long enough. Right now, people can keep money in, in uh, M-Shuari and a few other uh, ways. There are stocks that people can buy for as little as 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, and you keep them uh, growing. You grow your portfolio. So... Uh, uh, plan with that. Plan well how you intend to grow that asset portfolio. Then, in uh, unnecessary expenses, you do not have to dress so expensively in college. There are people who will spend on, I just said, things like radio, which is, which is uh, a liability. Yes, uh, because it will always consume something from you. If you are, for example, living in your own house where you're paying power, it still consumes power. It still consumes your time if you want to just listen to it and operate it. It doesn't add much value. So check everything you are buying. It will be very, very uh, helpful to know about that. And uh, know which portfolios you can invest in. I love telling people to think long term. 
you are not going to be in college forever. You are not going to be a student forever. Other people immediately they finish, they still come back to do a master's and maybe PhD. That's good, but you will not be a student forever. Life will still be there waiting. So always think long term. If with every income that you have, with every investment that you're making, think long term. You are going out there. If you have, uh, most times the people who are helping you today will not help you when you finish college because they have other people they want to help. Most times, the people who have been helping you throughout your secondary life are waiting for you to also start helping them. Are you going to be a responsible person? Uh, you know, university makes you to be thinking universally. You think globally. You think big things. You're thinking how to solve problems. Are you going to be a liability to them? I've seen people go back and start... Uh, looking for uh, excuses why they can't get jobs and they look for jobs for three years. They could still create jobs. They could still look for other things to sell. The problem is they, 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 there are too many jobs, I like saying. I've always seen people get jobs. But the problem is usually the way they think, the way they ab approach the, that same uh, scenario and the way they sell themselves. They sell themselves as desperate people. Nobody wants to work with the desperate person. They sell themselves as people who don't have much value to add to the market. And that's why somebody will say, uh, I, I need any job. So which job is that? There can't be something like any job. That is somebody who doesn't know exactly what he or she wants. Remember we said, you must start with a result. What result do you want? You must be clear about it. You must imagine it. Out of college, during our time, people would go to, PwC would come and interview people, they give those aptitude tests. I didn't sit any of them because I knew I was not going to work in any financial organization. Now, there are so many Chiromo students in various banks, very, in the banking industry. Barclays is used to employ like crazy. Some other people in uh, other campuses, like main campus, they were always doing these CPAs, whatever, but then they were not very advantaged when it comes to doing aptitude tests. So they fail the aptitude test with their CPAs and they are not picked and Chiromo students are picked. You see, so you are better off because besides everything else, you are being taught reasoning, you are being taught to analyze things, you are being taught critical thinking and things like that, though indirectly. And... Uh, in that case, you are better placed to even pass some aptitude tests and things like that. So the question is, do you know exactly even the job that you want to be involved in? Do you know which industry? I personally knew I wanted to be in the ICT industry and to also share knowledge with people. So I did not apply for any bank. I did not do any of those aptitude tests. Instead, I chose to go to IAT and up my skill. And I knew I should be in an ISP industry. I joined ISP. I worked for Africa Online for like two and a half years thereabout. And then I left employment. Yeah, I left employment in 2010. That's 10 years ago. And so I've always been solo. The same planning, long range vision. I dreamt of having a house in Nairobi because I was homeless even at home. I was living with people today. I have a house in Nairobi and most of the things that I dreamt about, I already have them because I had an idea about what I want. Right now, I'm praying to have a home, not just a house, an apartment somewhere, but a home where I have compound and I can conduct trainings within my compound and people can always book and come and we provide with them everything, including, including team building. And that is now my next step. That's now what I'm thinking about. Today, I run most of the things uh, from anywhere I am. I can uh, do my, uh, solve my customers' problems wherever they are because uh, most of my businesses are done online. Most of them are done just I only need access to internet. That is it. And that is the freedom I want. I operate mostly from home. Yeah? Uh, my wife went and worked with a bank. Uh, Stanbic Bank and she retired last year so we are always available in the house with children and everything 
and things just work fine. That, um, that's the ideal life that I imagined, that there is nobody rushing anywhere. But we are living the life that we dreamed about. We live our dreams. Everyone can do that. We just need to have long-range vision. We just need to plan. When you're in college, plan by when do you want to do what. I've had people planning when they want to drive their first cars. It's a good thing. The question is, where are you going to get this money to buy the, that vehicle? It's a good thing to buy. It raises your status. A friend of mine, Pascal, Pascal was doing statistics in uh, Chiromo. <coughs> he majored in statistics. And he started solving people's problems in college. People would come to him, people who are doing surveys, and he would analyze the data doing, is it SPSS, something like that. Uh, two of them actually did that. And then after, after, uh, after college, he had uh, planned to set up his own business. Uh, of research. Today he runs a big research organization called First Data. First Data does research for many organizations, for governments, for UN, whatever. And he's built a very big home in uh, Utawala. You see, that is long range vision. Thinking about how you're going to... So, these are people who don't pay rent in Nairobi. I, I was taught that for you to be in Nairobi, you don't need to pay rent. Now, he was telling me when he bought his first car that he realized the first savings. He, rea he realized immediately he bought a car that, oh, you need insurance for the vehicle. He did not think about it. Oh, he buys insurance. He realizes that a vehicle uh, uh, can break down. Then immediately all the people who knew you as just another person who finished college yesterday, they've put you at, uh, they've ranked you higher. Now their expectations are much higher from you. They want you to help in this. They want you to attend this fundraising. They want all sorts of things just come with that buying of a vehicle. So keep thinking. It's a good thing, a good status symbol, but can be a big liability. So you are better off having a home sometimes, but those are on your own preferences and decisions. So when people are thinking, well, when am I going to drive my first car? It's a good thing. You can plan with it, but also plan with other things. You can live... If, if you have a house, the other day a friend of mine was telling me, you know, he's, uh, he's been in employment, then he left abruptly to try a business world without a lot of planning anyway. So he told me, you see, you people are lucky, you don't pay rent. Yeah, uh, Me, I've got to rush to start thinking of paying rent, whatever, all those things. All this thing is in terms of where you put your focus. If you keep thinking in terms of assets and uh, limiting liabilities, you are going to be able to achieve this thing we call long-range vision. <coughs> now, at this point, I will uh, leave, it, uh, leave it for you. Today I have multiple sources of income, as I told you, including my books. Uh, I, I, I have two books on Amazon. When they are in Kenya, this is the way I sell them, 1600 and uh, 1800 I say when people take both of them together, it's 3,000. All that I've been discussing with you is in this book, Live Your Dream in Seven Days. As far as money and personal development is concerned, if every thinking, strategy, and everything is in this book. Everything to do with leadership that I've touched is in this book, Timeless Leadership, the symphony orchestra. You can always put up your orchestra. This one, I have a few copies of them. Uh, like uh, maybe 15 or not, no, no, not 20. There are just a, a few of them remained, uh, the stock that uh, I imported uh, lastly. They are always printed in UK, so I bring them in, but they are available online. If somebody, this is now another thing that you think about long term. Most people in Kenya print their books locally, they sell them on their own, and that's the end of the story. If somebody wants your, your book, for example, in Nigeria or in uh, Australia, how do you ship it there? Let them download it wherever they are. I always want business that r can run on its own. If a bookshop in uh, Egypt or in Japan orders for my books, I will not have to know the, the, uh, which bookshop, whatever. They will be shipped the books and they will stock them and 
they will sell them i will only see money getting to my account because of the systems that i have put in place through my printer and distributor so this is part of uh, my source of income uh, i may I not have done book launch and all those fancy things that people do because I've got to think whether it really makes business sense. At the moment, I want to close it there so that we can discuss, have questions, and interact. And I want to say that this is a long topic. I'm just, I've just summarized to Villa Niliwambia. But I want to wish you the very best and to see you at the top if you will be there to be seen. You have a choice to either be there or not to be there. But if you will be there, then we are going to meet at the top. Uh, I do trainings on leadership. I do business and ICT consultations. I do trainings on customer-related things, things to do with business-related. And uh, I give talks when you want people to give talks. I facilitate team building and all sorts of things. That is through Live Your Dream. ICT, I have an ICT company called ICT Gurus EA. That is ICT Gurus East Africa. And um, it's available globally. Somebody can subscribe there without necessarily involving me. Otherwise, that's my contact. pp at liveyourdream.co.ke or that uh, number there. And my website is otianopolpeter.com for more info. At this point, I want to invite people to ask questions because I had some of you have other meetings you want to attend. So just ask questions and uh, let me know. Uh, also have comments uh, if you have and things like that. We have like mm, uh, maybe 19 minutes or something. so much Peter for that one presentation and um, I believe each one of us is really proving what we learned because it is actually so much and like you have invited us now it is time for comments first of all we are going to begin by the, um, anyone willing to make a comment let us welcome those who have been in the comments like for the first 10 minutes and then from there we shall pick London. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Madam. Can I make my comment? Please do. Hello. Yes, yes, Hello, we are hearing. Something. We are able to hear. I want to make my comment. Let me make my comment first because I might likely to check out because of another meeting. Uh, thank you, Peter, for the nice presentation of these two consecutive uh, days. Um, you've really touched a lot of lives, including uh, myself, to be in that bracket. Your presentation is actually in line with uh, what uh, I've been dreaming that these students uh, should be told. And uh, I know that we're going to teach others. Most of the teammates here are good learners. So we're going to teach our fellow colleagues and um, we run a number of things. We'll be inviting you in various activities. We'll only answer one of my questions when we'll be answering questions. I was to ask you, how do you support people who have People who have what? Uh, we are not getting. He was mute. Oh, now he's back. He's unmuted. Uh, have you have finished, madam? No. no. 
You, you've asked a question we are yet to get. How do you support people who have what? Uh, Asante. Me, please. Oh. Uh, dreams. Afle, we didn't get your question, yes, please. Madam. Hey, how do you support people who have young dreams? or initiatives that uh, uh, they want to make them grow or in the different line? How do you support them uh, to, to, to build it out? That was my question. Thank you. I've, I've done with my comment so that others can say something. Asante. OK. Yeah, other, others can go on. Thank you, Humphrey. More comments, more questions, please, then you will answer them at the same time. Maybe three people. Okay, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Yes, yes uh, this was a very good presentation, and I've really learned a lot as much as finance is concerned and how you plan for your finances. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Otieno. My question is, uh, he has said that uh, for his books, they are printed in the UK. I really want to know how this is done and how he, he gets the connection to get them being posted in Amazon and so on. Thank you so much. Mm. Yes, go on. Um, my question is that you have a great idea, like right now we are young, but if you have that great idea, you need money to invest or support or, or investors to support you. How do you get these investors? And if you get them, what is the best way to approach them for a positive result? Okay. Mm, good. Uh -huh. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, any, uh, any other person? Uh, thank you so much, PP. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, more so the, okay, let me say the whole of today, the session about the thoughts, and now comes the money. Uh, what I would say, most of us as young people, we really lack knowledge about financial intelligence going at home most of the time the parents just give you money go and uh, go and utilize that one help come but we really lack knowledge about financial intelligence so i want to say thank you so much for taking your time uh, putting your pen into that book so that you can we can be able to learn and the other thing I would just want to say, I don't have a question, but I would just want to say, as young people, we should learn to make sure that if money works for us, but we don't work for money. If we work for money, we'll end up having financial struggles in our life. But if money works for us, then we are good to go. Thank you. Uh, good, good. Thank you, thank you, Njeru. Uh, a any other we can reach of the five before I comment? We are now at four. Four people have talked. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter? Yes. I just wanted to make a okay. comment. That was a very wonderful presentation. And uh, personally, anything on uh, financial matters, I'm very keen on that because it does not only affect the young people but even adults you'll realize that uh, most people will work so many years majority of us and in most cases you are so afraid of retirement because all the years you've worked you found it very difficult to balance between your income and your expenditure so that's a comment from uh, from me but now i wanted to ask about uh, the issue of the needy students 
at the Poland, we have so many students. We try to support them by giving them work study. But then I discovered that most of these students actually are getting help, the loan from help. But then at the same time, they are not able to manage it so that once they get the money, it goes out or they spend it on other things. And then the next minute, because they are registered as needy students, a few of them do not even have uh, money for their meals. So I don't know what comment to make about that because this is really a great challenge to many students, financial management. When you get from help, it comes, it goes within one month, and the rest of the time you have no money to spend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me just pick. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, okay, just go on. Okay, okay. I just wanted to give yeah. a comment. I just wanted to give a comment. I'm, I'm so grateful uh, that I've, uh, I've been taught about personal finance management. Uh, I'm currently a fourth year, and I'm so glad to be to be taught about the same. Uh, I, I cannot do much about uh, the money that I've lost since first year, but uh, starting from this moment, I think it's good for me to, to put everything that I've learned in consideration. So I'm so grateful and thank you for the presentation. Uh, great, great. Uh, thank you, thank you. So let me let me just uh, thank thank you for that. Uh, gov are you governor, Odera? Oh, governor, oh, Jivan? <laughs> yeah, Jivan. <laughs> so thank you. Let me just comment. Yes. Yeah, yeah, le let me just comment on uh, the questions that have been raised. <coughs> <coughs> so, uh, I will start with. Uh, I will start with uh, what Humphrey said. Supporting, how would we support people who uh, may, may be in need or young people, young talents, whatever? Now, throughout my life, everybody I sit with, these young people, I've always shared with them knowledge. One thing I love is, you know, my personal mission, we didn't discuss this, but it's always good to know your personal mission. My personal mission is, is to impact people's lives positively and that they may be able to live their dreams. And if you remember the way I started yesterday's discussion, it was when I realized that lots of my friends were dropping out of school because of the same thing. They could not go to secondary school because of school fees. I was also going through the same. And so my trouble was, how come some people have more than enough? In fact, people who lack school fees tend to have more thirst for school than people who have it all. They have all the school fees, they don't want to go to school. But I was wondering how come some people have plenty and others don't. And throughout life, and this is why I still appreciate my own study for physics and I will still uh, vouch for it, it's taught me to think, to think, to keep analyzing things and come up with uh, possible solutions. So, goes it there. So, if if uh, somebody uh, my, my my personal idea is every time i sit with somebody we can always share ideas i help them to have a bigger picture a broader picture of what life is and how they can uh, achieve whatever the dreams they have if they have dreams most times you realize that when you discuss with any individual most of them don't even have a personal mission they don't even have a personal goal they don't know anything much about what they want their lives to turn out uh, uh, to be in the future. So this is something I discuss one, one on one. Two, I have various uh, avenues through which I do this, including the Rotary, where we provide mentorship, we provide uh, uh, talks and uh, support for various uh, needy groups. I learned that everyone, uh, th there are too many needy people. If you do not have a channeled way of supporting them, you may end up uh, wasting energy. And there are lots of other uh, avenues, including church groups and things like that. So basically, that's what I do. And whenever I'm also invited to talk to students, I do it. And I do it 
a lot of times not because they pay me because hardly do they pay anything that other people pay me outside your yeah, students community will only maybe refund your fare if at all so uh, that one that is the much that i do next is what opondo asked about printing the books in uk remember i said when you seek you find and you've got to be clear about the results you want what type of book do you want to produce uh, how neat do you want it and then the idea is how do you want it distributed so i had to go through that problem solving thing what can i do what can i read whom can i ask having a clear idea of what i want then i had to research and find uh, big organizations that deal in uh, such businesses and partner with them and so i partnered with lightning source uk uh, <coughs> their printing branch is called ingram and most of the bookshops all over the world buy books from them so they are the people who print and that's where i print them it's seeking then finding morin is talking about big ideas yeah yeah it's good to have big ideas and most times people don't fail because they lack capital they fail because they lack ideas yeah so in your idea you need to find a way that remember we talked about communication yesterday you find a way you are going to communicate it remember we've talked about selling find a way to sell an idea because a leader sells and they sell ideas so you must learn to sell that idea to the extent that people are going to buy it the investors are going to buy it and if you know clearly the results that you're looking for you will get the right people because thoughts become things and what we focus on expands what we expect we get those are natural laws we cannot deviate from them so the idea you have a big idea here and one other thing is don't let people discourage you about how possible it is let me give you uh, uh, typical examples when i was in chiromo uh, and uh, mobile telephony had just come in i bought myself a phone just to keep in touch with my siblings and then occasionally i would send to them money using airtime uh, i buy airtime i send uh, then i tell them to go to a certain friend there who would uh, who would give them money for the airtime and then they get money then i kept i kept thinking there should be a way to send money using a phone i did not act on it but somebody else acted on it and now we have mpesa and all these mobile payment that idea i had it and i kept thinking about it and through that and a few others which i'm going to say i realized that when an idea comes to you it doesn't come just to you it comes to so many other people just like when the sower goes sowing see some seed fall on the wayside others uh, by uh, on thorns on rock and on good soil the question is whether you are the good soil so that it can germinate it didn't germinate in me i kept thinking it should be happening i was in college i think second or third year i did not know much to do about that but it happened people somebody else filled that need i would have brought that same idea again i thought about uh, i was I, you know in in the hostels you have uh, you have uh, a bed and then you have light uh, the the switches for the light and sometimes you feel like that switch should be closer then i started thinking why can't we have a remote controlled switches i presented this i presented two ideas to uh, a study year projects that i wanted to do to uh, one of my lecturers and he said that will take you too long you will not finish it within this time i would have started it maybe i would have finished it later but I, later i realized that idea was implemented and people are already doing the same and several other things several other ideas that came to me uh, along the way i was talking to some engineers i said this electricity we don't need to transmit it using cables we need to find a wireless way of transmitting it because principally speaking energy is neither created nor destroyed it can be transformed 
And if we can transmit waves, we can transmit energy in terms of waves and things like that. We should be able to transform this uh, electricity, electric energy, into a form that can be wireless and later we convert it back. But some engineers told me, well, those are not possible. I know it from basic principles that it should be possible. But nowadays it happens. We have light bulbs that don't use cables and things like that. So ideas come. Maureen, when you have a big idea, don't let people talk you out of it. Number two, let yourself be possessed with it so much that you can sell it because you can only sell what you've bought. Buy it and be passionate about it, be committed. And when you go to sell it, that is to speak about it, people will buy it. Identify investors, identify people who can run uh, with you uh, uh, on the idea. Not everyone, including experts, will buy it because some people will look at it critically and tell you this is not possible. But maybe it's possible. Because not everything that makes sense, uh, not, not everything that is possible makes sense. When Thomas Edison talked about uh, creating light uh, from uh, electricity, it was looked like uh, something that's not possible. But he tried over 10,000 times, but then later managed to uh, uh, get it. There was... Uh, there was... Uh, 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 the Wright brothers who came up with aeroplane. What do you think people told them when they said, we want people to fly on the air? It was unthinkable. But later it happened. So just work on it, just do what you can do. Over time, you will find a way and some other people who are willing to invest in it. And you can always discuss this uh, a little uh, much further. Maybe we can even discuss it later. Njeru has talked about uh, 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 people, even uh, uh, even parents and uh, and uh, and pe people lacking in in uh, financial intelligence. It's true that even our parents, by the way, most of the parents don't have this idea, don't have the knowledge. The same thing Rosie is talking about. Most people are not taught this. You know what is taught in school is generally academic. This is not school taught subject, and this is why, if you remember, I said yesterday that there is always a bridge that you need to cross between your academics and your success. And that is self-study. Somebody says, formal education earns you a living. Uh, Self-education earns you a fortune. The moment you had your formal education, you now need this self-education. That's now where you grow in your leadership, you grow in your financial intelligence, you grow in your relationship, chemistry, you grow in all these other facets of life and you become a better person, you grow in value in the marketplace, you become somebody who, who people want to buy, people want to follow, and that makes you successful. So that is true. And uh, the other thing that, you men you, uh, that I wanted to mention with respect to that is between you and money, somebody is becoming a slave. The question is who? A friend of mine said, to me, and not long ago, he is not schooled. By the way, I learned from people who, some, some of whom are not even schooled. He, uh, we were talking about money. You go home and you realize that people who've reached form four, uh, some of them are broke, but this guy is not even uh, finished class eight. But he's always well to do. He has a family, he has a big home. And he was telling me, you know, many people, when they have their money, money controls them. They just feel itching. They, they, can't, they can't settle. They are looking for people to buy for something. They are looking for things to buy, whatever. As for me, when I have my money and it's in my pocket here, it is there until I choose what I want to do with it. That thing made a lot of sense for me. Right now I'm writing another book called uh, 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 Strong Fools, Lazy Smarts. It's somewhat related to the things I've learned from those people, from that person. So don't let money control you. Be the person in charge of money. As I said yesterday, money is a very emotional subject. So remember that between you and your money, somebody is a slave and somebody is a master. Please choose to be the master. And uh, about needy students, uh, I have a friend right now. He was also assisted through self-study. He was working in the library. Uh, he was studying law, but he used to stay in Chiromo with a <coughs> another friend during holidays. Today he's a big guy, he's a, 
is a, an advocate of the High Court, but works with the UN. And uh, I've seen self-study. Uh, I've seen uh, those needy students who are genuinely needy being very focused and able to uh, grow and become something. Problem is, sometimes the way we approach these needy people is as people who really need help. We don't educate them. So one of the solutions is what we've just done, organizing for them solution and mentoring them. Remember, we don't need to always give people fish. One thing I learned is, even as Maureen was trying to elude, don't help people with capital to do their businesses. They will, they will not have any commitment and they will lose it. 100% I've seen this, people always lose capital they are given to start a business. If there are exceptions, they could be very few. But most times, uh, let people know how to earn it. Let people know how to uh, deserve the help. Teach people to deserve the help. Let them have some bit of commitment into it. And so the needy people who lose focus, uh, they may be, uh, you know, I also saw some people get lost in college because they lived a very uh, down-to-earth life. They were not able to afford things, and now they get big loan, and they get this money. And now this is the time to go and buy big chicken, yeah, some assaulting and can chick. And it becomes a habit. I realize that when you start eating those things, it also becomes a habit. And what happens thereafter is you always want to do it and do it and do it again. Some other people, because they've lived with very strict parents, They've not gotten an opportunity to maybe go for discos and go to, to clubs. That is the time they start going to clubs and, and drinking and uh, lose their lives. I've seen people who lost their lives. Professor will tell you about Karl Marx. Karl Marx was a brilliant student, but started drinking and was always getting A's, by the way, and dr drank himself miserably. And... He later came to graduate so many years later after lots of problems with the administration. So we've seen lots of students lose their lives because of drinking. And even because of politics and getting involved in national politics, this boy who was shot the other day at club, at the club 36, I knew him. He was a friend to my friend. And so we, have, we met one day because we were discussing certain things with respect to the county government. Just shortly before he was shot, because the PA, the political advisor for uh, Governor Sonko, is a product of Chiromo, you see. And uh, we are still friends. Most times, uh, if, if I want something there, I would always give him a call. So he came up with this boy, and we were discussing a few things. I was surprised that he was shot because of something related to politics. So always just get to know to what extent you can go with seeking uh, or with uh, providing help and things like that. Otherwise, uh, well, uh, Jivan, Jivan didn't, didn't, didn't ask any question, and so we can move on. Anybody else? I think we are at 11 right now. So actually, some minutes after 11, any other business? Any other comment? Uh, PP, I want to make a few comments before you people wind up. Uh, I want to again thank you people uh, for being with us. <coughs> We've learned, I keep on even learning from PP. Uh, I know you are seeing him on the wall. He's a small guy in size. <laughs> so, PP, when things return to normal, avail yourself with us so that they can see you in person. And uh, you can... He likes smiling, so those of you who have not seen him, <laughs> you will see him smiling. So we want to thank you and appreciate you. <laughs> Lucy, again, I want to appreciate you. Uh, our fellow, our dear students who have attended, uh, thank you, and I hope you will put into practice 
some of the things you have learned uh, herein. We always uh, strive to make our students better uh, so that when they go out there, they are uh, prepared to meet the challenges of being independent citizens. So thank you very much. Even when you close and I'm not there, uh, you know you have my blessings. Again, bye and have a good day. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, Pipi. Yes, yes. Uh, kindly, uh, I wanted to ask whether you could provide us with your contact. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I could. Le let me just put them on the screen again. Yeah. There. Okay, thank you very much. Great, great. You are good, Jeru. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So now we want to close with a word of prayer once again. Uh, Pipi, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you when we reopen because I'm sure we need to talk to the other students. So we shall discuss that when we get back. And even for those who are not able to join us because of the various challenges of network and other issues, I'm sure they would really be glad to meet you and even to speak to you. And we shall be able to consult and see whether we can have this, especially for our needy students, because they need a lot of support to be able to stand on their own.